Hey everybody! Welcome back to uh, Northern Lion Plays the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. That could be the lost. That could be the ah! <laughs> well, at least we got the 10. Alright, let's do it. Who cares? Curse of the Unknown. Well, if you're gonna get a curse as the lost, Curse of the Unknown is one that you want. Northern Lion, show the seed! Charlie's forgetting to show the seed! Go on, sub this shit right now. No, I don't I don't show the seed as the lost until we start to get a little further. I made that mistake several times before, you know, you'd, you'd start the run. Hey, here's our seat as the lost, walk into the next room, there's like two mullabooms and you just die. I don't, it's so ironic that, you know, I had the boost, she had the chronic, and the Lakers beat the Supersonics, but it, it actually is, it's an ironic coincidence. It's m downright Morissettian um, that uh, the number one enemy for killing me is the enemy that you need to find in order to unlock the lost, the mullaboom. And that the Mullaboom never fucking shows up, unless apparently you're playing as the Lost when it shows up all the time, it just directly runs into you and ruins your shit. But, um, I would, I would welcome an awesome Lost run. I mean, w when wouldn't you, I guess, but... We're gonna be a little cautious here. And by cautious, I mean I'm gonna actively push myself into an active explosive, just to... Just to, you know, have a 1 in 500 chance of hitting a crawl space. But that crawl space or black market could give us the stopwatch. You know, that's how we did pick up one lost victory. Oh, I don't like this room very much. Weaken them. Weaken them. They've been weakened. I don't like walking uh, in between, like, several of the enemies at the same time. Especially when they have kind of like a unreliable bullet shot uh, that can completely catch us off guard. But really, uh, for, for the seed, I'm probably going to hold out until we... Mm. Mullaboom. No! <laughs> I'm probably gonna hold out until we uh, get to the first deal with the devil, but anyway. Oh, don't do this to me again. Lazarus, I like Lazarus a little bit more. I'm not salty about it, you know, I people keep telling me, let's just write the C down here, 61QV2D44. People have provided me with a variety of ways that I could get around randoming the lost. I could roll a real life or a digitized, eh, that's pretty good. Forgot I cannot fly. Um, I could roll a real life or a digitized like D10 and get true randomness, which the game does not have. I could do that Alt F2 thing and copy my save file, and uh, as a result of that, I could uh, have a save file that does not have the lost on it, which would be fine. But I don't, I don't really mind it honestly. Like uh, the lost, it is what it is. I, I like the variety of playing as the lost and. It's, it's quite clear to me that people don't really have an interest in seeing me pop off, at least most people don't have an interest in seeing me pop off like a hundred win streak. Like, they, they have less interest in the number and more interest in the actual, like, quality of each run. Uh, in, in, from an entertainment perspective, not, not just a, like, a mechanical skill perspective. Which I respect, so, um, yeah, I, I think taking away the lost for my personal philosophy of entertainment with Isaac would be uh, a little bit of a, an unfortunate loss. No pun intended at all there. If there was a pun intended, it's the worst pun of all time. Uh, so I'll cover my tracks there. But anyway, yeah, that's that's why I'm going to stick with it that way. Maybe one day, you know, maybe we get like a year on from the release of Isaac. I decide I want to take a, a genuine crack at popping off like a, an enormous streak. Like just to do it once, you know? Like I don't want to become a marathon runner, but it might be it might be an interesting kind of insight into my own person and, and dedication to, to run a marathon once. I don't want to do it all the time, but yeah, it's like, I, you gotta test your VO2 max sometimes, right? You're, you gotta test your BOIR max sometimes, see what you can get. But uh, that's not in, the, uh, not in the near future, anyway. Limon Party. Strength card, I'm, I'm interested in. Uh, if we were fighting the haunt, I might consider it. I think we will kill ourselves on this floor. Because there will be a spirit heart that we can pull out of it and we'll respawn with one HP. Uh, we might be able to get into our shop. If we have an extra key and buy another one, plus we have a strength card that we can use for a deal with the devil on the next floor. It's not its not guaranteed, but it also allows us to get another pretty fly. We'll just walk over the spikes, take damage. I guess we didn't literally have to kill ourselves to make that happen, but we could <laughs> and will. And this is why Lazarus is actually one of my most favorite characters in the game right now. That might not last forever, and for a long time I was like, Lazarus is the worst, why would you ever play him? He's the worst version of every character. But now that, like... I, I fully understand the Lazarus mechanic. I'm not gonna say that he's, uh, you know, the greatest character in the game, and especially not a character for everybody. But he's a character that I like. 
Um, be because of his weirdness, basically. Pretty much entirely because of his weirdness. And uh, there, there's no other character in the game where, you know, you, you endeavor to kill yourself early on to get a damage bonus. And that's kind of cool. That's like, you know, when, when we were talking about vanilla. This is a, uh, a pre-rebirth stream I did with Ed, like, probably three years ago at this point. But anyway... He's like, my favorite character in the game is Eve, because it's got those weird mechanics where you hurt yourself to do damage. And like that's why he likes items like the Razor Blade as well. And I was like, you made the game, but you are wrong. <laughs> I mean that with the, the utmost respect possible. You know, like, you, you made the game, but that is, that is silly. Eve sucks, and, you know, nobody likes her. And that's not totally true. A lot of people do like Eve. I'm just exaggerating. Not to sound ungrateful. But anyway... Um, I think Lazarus is like one of the coolest actual manifestations of that strategy where you have to pick a moment, you don't have to, but oftentimes you can pick a moment and then be like, okay, this is where I'm going to kill myself to get a permanent, basically 20% damage boost and we'll roll with it from there. I think that's such a cool mechanic. This is interesting. No demon judgment here, which is a little unfortunate. That's alright. We have a curse room, which uh, it may be nice to visit. But for now, my, my plan on this floor, I mean, it's looking pretty good, right? Like, we have a huge uh, buffer, or at least a decent buffer of protection for our deal with the devil interest. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come <laughs> on. I just wanted to get close enough that the cube of meat can hit him without invoking any knockback. Oh, yeah, store credit will actually be amazing for us here if we can actually... Oh, walk into the fire. Smart idea. Give the game a false sense of security that you're actually an idiot. Um, but, uh, yeah, if we can actually get a key and get into our shop, that'll be awesome. Gotta move quickly when we enter here. Yeah, it spawns, like, right there. Okay, just hold off a second here. Don't like that room. Shows up a lot. I don't like it. Um, additionally, we have okay damage. And on top of our, uh, okay damage, we've got a full suite of orbitals, which is really awesome here. And, and the strength card is, uh, is fuel that we can use on our deal with the devil. It's... A little risky, you know, we have to have spirit hearts to back ourselves up. Otherwise, we could end up using the strength card to accidentally kill ourselves, and that's no fun. Well, for for me. <laughs> for those of you watching at home, it might be, but, uh, yeah, we just want to cool it just a little bit here. I'm playing a little too aggressively with this cube of meat. I tend to, like, that's my most dangerous situation, personally, is, um, you know, picking up an early orbital when my damage is shit, because I'm like, now I have a great way to deal damage, and there's only, like, a 90% chance that I get hit in the process. No bombs is really unfortunate. No keys is also very shitty. We could, uh, I'll probably spend some money on our arcade gambling, then, in order to try to get some keys and bombs. Double Monstro. Don't use the strength card yet. Don't use the strength card yet. The good news about having Cuba Meat is that it is a huge positive from an offensive standpoint if you just don't get hit in the process. Like, all you need to do, you need to stand next to the enemy for like a second and a half and it'll kill them. That went very well for us. We'll pick up Roid Rage. And then we do want to use our Strength card here. And we're going to take two of the items. We, we can only take two, so I'm going to take the one on the left and then the one in the middle. The Mark is fantastic. And Judas' Shadow. Judas the Shadow gives us an impetus to kill ourselves yet again, which is hilarious, but um, we'll, we'll probably avoid it temporarily. But this is pretty good. Um, Judas the Shadow, it's 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 either one of the worst... Uh, ugh, such a stupid play there. It's either one of the worst deals with the devil, or two hard deals with the devil to be specific, or it's... Um, wow. It's an incredible one, uh, and that, that depends on whether or not you die. I'm not sure whether I'm hoping we die or hoping we don't, but... Uh, I do have... Wait, where's... Where the heck is my credit card? We gotta go back for it. Come on, just one key. Two keys would be better, but, you know, one key is fine. Two bombs is actually a huge help. That should allow us to get into our item room, and... If we just get one more? Calm the... F factory on here with that. Might be saying, you know, go to the curse room. There's not... It's not wrong. Where did I... Oh. Oh, that room. Where did I put my, uh... Where did I put my credit card? Did I drop it in here? Did I ever have it? Am I hallucinating right now? <laughs> okay, um... I wonder if this would get the Tinted Rock and the Secret Room. It did. That is extremely lucky. We got more bombs out of it, which is nice, but... You know, we do need some keys if we're gonna actually be able to access our, uh, our shop. Oh, mm, we'll see. 
Scorpio. Scorpio is pretty good in my opinion. And now I don't really want to access our shop unless I can get our freaking credit card back. I oh. <laughs> I'm actually losing my mind, by the way. I think I'm just going to leave this floor. When I say I'm losing my mind, what I'm hinting at specifically is where the fuck did this credit card go? I'm losing it, man. But we're just going to go. And I'm going to try to pretend this floor never happened. Did I miss a Tinted Rock in... Nah, it doesn't look like it. We're just going to go. We're just going to go, all right? And I've probably made a huge mistake there, and inevitably this has ruined uh, hundreds of people's days. I apologize for that. That's clearly my fault. You're, uh, you're living a balanced life where you get angry at somebody leaving a trinket behind. And I apologize for interrupting it. But in any case, we're still... Eh, we're balling, but well within the realms of control right now. And that's always okay. Of course, I would prefer for things to go off the rails on perhaps a crazy train a little bit more. Yeah, was, I mean, there was stuff that we could do to get out of that, but it was it was a tricky dodge, no question about it. Um, interesting. Let's just put it that way for this run. By the way, with that quip about people getting angry, I'm just being... I'm being self-aware and cracking a joke. I'm not trying to bite the hand that feeds me, you know. I'm, I'm here because of viewer support. And those of you who get angry at my play, you're still watching. So I understand that it's it's more like the way you get angry at a family member who turns to hard drug use or something You're like that. You're like, ah, oh, you have so much potential and you're ruining it, taking the crocodile, you know? I understand that. And, uh, and I respect that and I appreciate your support. I'm just cracking a joke about it at the same time. And I understand, this is one of the reasons that I kind of want Isaac to get harder. And I know that, you know, this is not going to be a criticism that everybody's going to agree with, but uh, I want Isaac to get a little bit harder, so the most important thing is winning again. Because right now I understand it, you know, the, the episodes that I do that get the most dislikes are like when I leave a Joker or a Yara rune behind or something like that, and people are like, that's the biggest mistake I've seen in weeks! And that's because Rebirth is maybe, even on hard mode, a little bit too easy to win. I would love to get back to that... Um, level of difficulty. Not that Rebirth is bad by any stretch of the imagination. I like it a lot more um, th than the original, but I, I, I love them both, obviously. But um, I would love to get back to the point where just winning a run in Isaac is kind of like, whoa, good job. Like, I'm not saying that it should be 50-50, but I'm, I'm thinking more like it should probably be like, um, you know, maybe 75-25 or something like that instead of 95-5. But that's, I, I don't want the game to be balanced for my own personal experience level, but I would like a new difficulty mode that maybe is a little bit trickier. Not to force everybody to play on that level of difficulty. Maybe they want an even higher level of difficulty, I don't know. Anyway, I get it, don't worry about it. I uh, I relish those opportunities to talk because I think when, I, when I'm not thinking about what I'm doing, this is gonna sound ridiculous, but when I'm not thinking about what I'm doing, I play better, like I dodge better and I shoot better. When I'm thinking about what I'm doing, I make better decisions. No question about that. If we die, it's not the end of the world. Thank you for keeping me alive, though. Two really lucky uh, saves there. Um, I would like to stay alive and use Judas's shadow, perhaps, in a not so urgent context in the future. But uh, like to, to trade our life for a deal with the devil would probably be better. But we'll see. We are going to get a second level cube of meat, which is nothing to sneeze at. It's also nothing to write home about. But you know, it, it exists somewhere in the spectrum between sneezing and and writing a, a handwritten letter to say, "Check it out, mom. Your son's doing all right." Um, not really loving my positioning here, but we did stay alive, so there is that. You're very nearly dead. Just don't die in the process at the end here. That should do it. We did get a cube of meat. I wouldn't mind a Krampus fight. It's got to happen at some point. You just, you know, you feel it in your bones now. That was very stupid of me uh, to dodge into that. We still want to fight Krampus, honestly. And now our damage is going to be out of freaking control, which is great. But our HP is going to be out of control as well, but in the opposite direction. But I, I relish the uh, the Dark Judas opportunities when we get him, because I don't get Dark Judas opportunities all that often. With five cents, we might be uh, approaching that territory where you're like, okay, we're going to spend all of our money for the rest of the game on Spirit Hearts. You know, we've all existed within that reality at, at one point or another in our lives. Don't tell me you have it. But I still think this is... It, it would be foolish to call this a one run yet, but I'll be straight with you. I think we're going to win this run. And maybe that's um, 
a little bit of baseless hope. Cricket's body has not shown up in forever, uh, and I love it. I love, I wish it showed up faster. Look, I called it a one run, and then all of a sudden we pick up the wafer and uh, Cricket's body, you know? How much of that is uh, the game influencing us, and how much of that is us influencing the game, you know? Weird. Do, 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 do. Probably can't tell from my terrible pitch, but that's supposed to be the X-Files theme song. I was going to say that's supposed to be the X-Men theme song, but that would be incorrect. That one's more like... Do 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 Anyway. That was fun. Uh, let's go check out our shop, and on the interior, we should procure a spirit heart for our purposes. Oh, we're still holding credit card! I I'm an idiot. I'd, I've been, I was holding it the whole time, wasn't I? I realized that we didn't have to waste it there, but I just wanted to get rid of it because I'm pissed now. <laughs> All right. The whole time? That's like... Don't tell me you've never had a situation where you're like, Where's my glasses? I can't find my glasses. And they were like on your head the whole time. Everyone's got one situation like that in their lives. Hopefully that one's mine for this year. Look. I'm not a detail-oriented individual. Anyway. We're still doing well here. Hopefully that was a, a moment of, of brevity. That is... That's a mistake so silly. But but inconsequential also, but that's a mistake so silly that I when people are like, I think Northern Lion's faking his stupidity for for views. Like that's I, that lends that conspiracy theory some notion. You can tell, by the way, that I'm totally faking everything for views by the way that I, you know, pretty much exclusively play uh, indie games, which as everybody knows are the most popular games out there. So pretty much I got the formula down pat, man. What you do is be the first person to cover a game that nobody has ever heard of and, you know, only 1% of the people that watch the video will ever endeavor to play themselves. That's the secret to YouTube success, baby. It's definitely not Five Nights at Freddy's, I'll tell you that much. Okay. And that's not a shit on anybody who's played Five Nights at Freddy's. Or anybody who likes Five Nights at Freddy's, I've never played it myself, I'm just cracking a joke. I'm just a shithead. Pay no attention to me, but please pay, pay attention to me, please. <laughs> My livelihood <laughs> depends on it. Yeah, tip your servers. Okay. Unless they're from that uh, sushi place I talked about in the last episode. So this is like a superb one run right here. A superb one run. Um, we have the wafer now. Helps us out a ton in the future. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if we <laughs> picked up some HP. At some point on this run, uh, Cricket's body is awesome, especially with uh, well, it's it's awesome with the kind of stuff that we've got going on in our favor right now. There are sometimes that Cricket's body is terrible, and that will be when uh, we uh, have uh, like Fire Mind. Fire Mind makes Cricket's body pretty awful, but apart from that, uh, it's it's going to be good for us in this situation. And Stompy is okay. Do I prefer Stompy to um, Thunder Thighs? It's it's super debatable. If you have high speed, I'd probably rather have Thunder Thighs, but uh, if you if you don't worry about your HP or don't have to worry about your HP, why you know, why worry, right? Stompy's a little bit better because it doesn't slow you down. I think we'll take the nine volt here. Wouldn't mind buying the spirit hard, but if we're gonna be rolling with uh, Krampus' head, we should probably get the nine volt. It's a three cent spirit hard, let's just blow it up here. We've been pretty good about our donation machine lately, but stranger things have happened. Um, we might be able to crush the mushrooms and take half a heart instead of a heart, but I don't know if the mushrooms do a full heart normally anyway, so I'm not really in the interested position to check that out. This this should be a winnable run right here. Um, to some extent, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't say it necessarily depends on getting more deals with the devil, but... Uh, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to either get even more damage stacked up or ridiculous tier effects like if we can get rubber cement along with this or piercing tears along with this or you know other tier effects that stack on top uh, that would be lovely but as is right now this is looking pretty good considering we're only on uh, caves 2. Pretty good situation. Torn photo is an awesome upgrade for us to get as well and I'm not gonna fuck around with the other rocks on this floor I'm not gonna mess around with the arcade we're just gonna move along and you know not not count our chickens before they hatch. I will check this out, and I'm actually glad that I did. Probably something to be said. That's fine. 
Uh, probably something to be said for taking Guppy's paw with us, but as of right now, I'm just happy to have a Guppy item. And that's uh, fine by me. We are at the Spirit Heart level of cash right now, which is perhaps important. Excuse me, are you Northern Lion? We heard you left a bad review of the sushi restaurant. That's illegal in Canada. Don't you know that man's just trying to run a business? All right, I'm, I'm sorry. All right. We sentence you to the maximum punishment admissible under Canadian law. Publicly apologizing. Sorry about that, by the way. Okay. I hate playing into that stereotype, man. That Canadians are just, like, ruthlessly apologetic. We are polite, but it it leads to... That's pretty good. It leads to the spread of misinformation. Dan, you know, Dan Giesling. I collaborate with him on occasion. Um, he asked me, is it true that Canadians don't lock their doors? And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Of course we lock our doors. You think we're stupid or something like that? He's like, well, I, I guess it was like, I think at Bowling for Columbine or something like that. I've seen it. Um, I've seen it, I, and they go to like Toronto, and they're like, Toronto is the most dangerous city in Canada, but people still don't lock their doors, and I'm like, you know what, uh, I probably should have used two of spades there, but whatever, that dude must have walked around to about a thousand houses before he got like three people that didn't keep their doors locked, everyone I know locks their doors, and they all have the same reaction to it, they're like, why the fuck wouldn't I lock our doors, and there's an argument to be made, you know, people go like, uh, well, if someone really wanted to break into your house, a lock wouldn't stop them. Yeah, it wouldn't have hurt, though! <laughs> it wouldn't hurt. How did your house get robbed? Well, I didn't lock the door. He just kind of walked in. Like, that's that, at that point, does a judge just go, Are you fucking stupid? Like, what? It might not help it, but at the same time, I'm not trying to victim blame either. I'm not trying to say that if you don't lock your doors, you're asking to be robbed. Because that onus is definitely still on the robber to not be such an asshole. However... Come on. To some extent, you're you're going, come on. Right, we got Ghost Baby for free and a Hiera Rune. We will pick up all these bombs, because uh, we can double them in a second anyway. And we've already used way too many keys, but we'll pick up our Spirit Heart here. Um, everyone that I know in Canada locks their doors. Whether you live in a big city, small city, that don't matter. Don't matter at all. Um, because, why wouldn't you basically? It takes two seconds. I had a friend who used to argue the opposite point. He'd be like, I never look both ways when I cross the street because, uh, like, it takes a quarter of a second each time, but I cross the street a lot, so if you add that up over the course of my lifespan, you know, that's like a lot of time wasted. What are you doing instead of that time? What, what could possibly be more important than taking a quarter second to ensure that you don't fucking get hit by a car, you idiot? No, my time's too valuable to use it preventing a, an easily avoidable death. No, I'm, I should be looking at my phone instead, changing my song. Anyway, um, yeah, we lock our doors. There's some some Canadian stereotypes don't make sense to me. Crime exists in Canada, you know. I'll admit, you know, I I don't know if I know anybody who owns a firearm, like especially for like home defense or anything like that. And that might seem weird, or it might seem totally normal, depending on where in the world you live. But we lock our we lock our cars and we lock our our houses and apartments and stuff like that. And, you know, there there are murders, and there's drugs, and there's stuff like that, you know? It's not just a, a crime-free wasteland. Uh, like a month ago, this was actually... I, I am very much not the... You know the kind of person here, and if you are this kind of person, that's okay too. But there are, there are people who are really, really in love with Japan. For, for many different reasons. And I, I went to Japan. It was a, it was a lovely country. Uh, I, I like living in Canada, though. But, um... When we were in Japan, uh, well, then we came back, and Kate and I were going out for dinner. We got off the bus, and, like, some dude was not paying attention to where he was walking. And he walked in front of me, so I kind of bumped into him a little bit, not even on purpose. And he said, yeah, you better keep walking, motherfucker. And I'm like, you're gonna fight me for that! For you walking into me, you're gonna threaten to fight me. And I was like, man, you know, there are some things about Canada that I'm not 100% into, I guess. But that, that can happen anywhere. You know, there's assholes all over the world. That guy was just an idiot. But, um... What a great reason to get in a fight, by the way. Why'd you break your nose? Well, I fucking uh, walked into this guy, and then he, uh, I, I punched him, and he punched me. I'm not saying I would've won the fight, you know. I, I probably would've lost if this dude's getting in fights for slights that are as ridiculous as that, but... You know, it's... It's a wild place, man. And wait, the, the where this all ties back is I was like... That was... It, it was unfair, but it was like when I got back from Japan, and I, like, uh... This guy tried to... 
start a fight, basically. He wasn't trying to start a fight. He was just trying to be. He's like, I'm the bigger man. Yeah, fuck you. Walk away, asshole. I got you. That's how I derive my social value is by threatening strangers on the street. And I did it. Now I'll never have to confront the crippling uh, insecurities I have about my own life. Fuck yeah. Anyway, um, I was like, this will never happen in Japan. But then I realized that while well, I was in Japan, probably just because I don't speak Japanese, I didn't notice. Probably people were like, look at this bald ass fucking foreign asshole coming to Japan. You know, the, the, the foreign tourists are the cause of all the problems in this country. You probably thought I was American. Anyway. Yeah, man, like, there's, there's, there's shit in Canada. It's not like you just walk down the street. I'll take Hive Mind here. Just for fun. It's not like you walk down the street and, you know, you just, like, you see people tipping their hats to one another going, Sorry! Sorry! Star! No, I'm sorry! <laughs> I'm sorry! Here, take a free coronary bypass on the house, you know? That would be sweet, though. That's 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 the paradise that I want to live in. Sorry, sorry, I walked into you. Uh, can I give you a plastic uh, complimentary plastic surgery on the house? Anyway, I Canada's it's funny, man. It's I, I've spent a lot of time in America. The countries are so similar, but whenever I talk to Americans, they're like, well, not not all Americans. But whenever I talk to some Americans, they're like. Wow, you're from Canada? That's so weird. Does maple syrup grow on trees? Well, I mean, you're like, well, kind of, I guess, but, like, just come on up. There's a donation machine in here. That's weird. You can just come on up. We're right there, man. Just get a passport. Oh, I don't need a passport. I got everything I need right here. I'm actually jealous of that, that that if you're American, um, you, can, you can get away with not having a passport because you have so many... And I guess in Europe it's kind of the same thing, because with as long as you have any like EU citizenship, you can travel to almost anywhere else in the EU, right? That's I'm fucking jealous of that, like crazy. But in the U.S., without a passport, you can still visit so many like you know geographically and culturally distinct regions. You got the Northeast, you got um, the Southeast. I'm not just gonna name cardinal directions, but you know Northeast. You got New York, Boston, Philadelphia, stuff like that. Those might not technically be in the Northeast. Then you you fly for like three hours. And you're basically, you're in Miami, right? You're in the, the tropical area. And then if you fly the other way, you're in another kind of tropical area. And in California, you got Los Angeles. You can go, uh, you know, see where 90% of the movies that you've actually seen in your entire life are made. You know, go hang out on the beach, even if it's December. And then you can go up a little bit more and you got San Francisco. And you're like, shit, dude, San Francisco is actually kind of chilly right now. It's really cool that you can go to the southwest, you can have some tacos, you can go to the northeast, you can have some lobster, you can go to the pacific northwest, get some of the dopest sushi that exists in, like, the entire world, and I mean that sincerely, as someone who has, you know, spent time in Japan and, you know, lived in Korea. Up here in, in Seattle and Vancouver, they got some dope-ass sushi, man. That's, I'm envious of that, because in Canada, there's, there's some mystical shit in Canada, admittedly. I'm gonna go to our, um, curse room here. Like... You, without a passport, you can go to the fucking Arctic. That's pretty baller if you're into that stuff. I'm not really, because I would die and I'm a pussy. But, you could go up to Nunavut, you can go up to Alert, and basically, you know, be in the fucking Arctic. That's baller as hell. But apart from that, if you want to go to big cities, you got Montreal. That's the weirdest big city if you're an English speaker, because it's predominantly French speaking. But mostly, everybody still speaks English. And you got Toronto. Toronto is it's a big city. You got Vancouver. Vancouver's a big city. You know, you got Calgary. Calgary's a big city. They're all kind of like the same thing. So I'm jealous of that, but still. But still. You can go to Hawaii, man! It's an island made out of fucking volcanoes! I mean, I guess all islands are, technically. But still, that's... I'm jealous, man. I am jealous a little bit. I don't even know. I'm just ranting at this point. Guppy's Collar? Did we not pick up Guppy's Collar on this run? I don't know. I'm gonna take it just... Oh, we picked up Guppy's Paw. So I, I, I'm happy I picked this up, because we got a good chance to become Guppy. Anyway. The whole point of that argument, <laughs> that discussion, is that we lock our doors, okay? We still lock our Don't go up to a Canadian and be like, you can't just walk up to somebody on the street and be like, hey, can you give me a ride? I live uh, 400 kilometers away. And they'll be like, sorry, I can only take you, uh, I'm gonna, you're gonna have to wait 20 minutes before I take you there, because I, uh, I got a shareholders meeting in Tim Hortons, you know? We're basically just like a a less densely populated America, but a lot of our identity is based on the fact that we are not America. And you might think, uh, don't allow me to paint a, uh, a picture here where, like, Americans are ignorant about Canada, because there's a lot of Canadians that are ignorant about America as well, you know? But I think that's true the world over. 
You mean it's not true that every American owns an AK-47 with a barrel-mounted grenade launcher? For real, dog. Not even, like, the majority. <laughs> Maybe not even, like, like 0.01%. Anyway, this is getting into cultural identities and shit like that that I am A, not qualified to talk about, and B, you know, should be advised to stay away from, given that YouTube comments devolve into arguments over, you know, videos over how to bake cookies and shit like that. You ever go to, like, a video for, like, the Food Network? Not even the Food Network, but just anyone who makes a recipe? I guess we'll go get this. Um, oh, we we can use one bomb, but at that point, I'm like, my motivation is gone. You go, go like, I, I'm not even... I don't even know if this will work, because I haven't tested this, but this is my experience with looking up anything on YouTube. Go look up, like, how to make scrambled eggs and click on the video that is not the Gordon Ramsay one that everyone has watched, and then watch the comments devolve as you scroll up, because at the top is going to be where the biggest argument is, obviously. Watch it devolve from, he cooked those eggs too long, does this idiot not know anything about, to just like, fuck your mother, fuck your face, you know, God isn't real. Fuck your country. Like, it's crazy the arguments that people get into over the dumbest shit. Like, in the video, it'll be like some mild-mannered old lady, and she'll be like, I like my eggs a little harder as opposed to runny. And then the comments are like, fuck this bitch. Eggs are meant to be a little bit runny. That's what the creme fraiche is for. And you're like, wow, dude. That could be your grandma. I don't fucking care. She doesn't know how to cook eggs. She's a waste of space. Like, Jesus, man. Say that to her face, she'll kick the shit out of you. Granny strength is real, dog. She might have lived through the depression. Uh, actually, as of this point, that is probably pretty unlikely considering we're in like 2014. But anyway, she could have. If she was born like 15 years earlier, she could have lived through the depression, you ungrateful little shit. She can cook eggs however she sees fit. All right, magic mushroom is awesome and uh, Demon Baby is not, but it does allow us to get back to permanent Polaroid invincibility, so that's okay. This should be a one run at this point. I've always, uh, well not always, but I've often said uh, in these videos, and maybe you've heard me say it before, but to some extent, you know, the Marshall McLuhan quote holds true. The medium is the message. If the only people who will listen to your argument about something that you think is serious are anonymous people on the internet... Can you Yara a Yara room? No, you cannot. Um, then, well, not not specifically on the internet, because there's forums for that. But if, if the only people who will listen to you and argue with you are other people on... Everybody knows how silly YouTube arguments are. If you get involved in them, don't you always feel like, Oh, I can't believe I got involved in that shit. Or do you actually think, like, who's this idiot? And if you think, who's this idiot, don't you realize that, like... Like, I've gotten in so many arguments on the internet, and then afterwards I've been like, they're stupid, and then I realize, oh, no, wait, 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 wait. I'm also stupid. I think I actually am going to roll Tammy's head here. Because with Cricket's body, it's ridiculous. And this is not trying to disparage people who leave YouTube comments. As bad of a reputation as YouTube comments get, the vast majority of them, at least the ones that show up on, on my videos, and I know that even they get a bad rap sometimes for people to be like, just ignore all the comments, you know? Nothing good ever happens there. The, the majority of people are still extremely positive, and I'm very thankful for that. But whenever I see an argument, I'm like... Don't you, like, I know you've got stuff to do. You could be doing literally anything right now except arguing with, like, another dude on the internet. You're never gonna, no argument on the internet has ever proved, or has ever, like, convinced anybody to change their, their position. Everybody always leaves feeling stronger about the position that they started, but worse about humanity in general. It's, it's a psychological sickness, man. As, as I've gotten older, you know, I, I've, I've started to be a little bit less, you know, militant about, about my opinions. And whenever I disagree with somebody and I see someone post something that I think is really ignorant, I go like, Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I, I didn't realize that level of ignorance exists out there. And then I go and I make a sandwich or I have a beer or something like that, and I'm like, Ah, I'm glad I didn't waste my time, you know, fucking around with that guy. Look at the comments for any, anything. Like, this is why I hate when people are like, YouTube comments are shitty, I don't look at YouTube comments. Look at the comments for anything. Look at the comments on, like, an ESPN article where a, an NFL quarterback gets a concussion. People in the comments, like, literally, a, a medically diagnosed concussion. People will be like, well, back in my day, you know, if you got a concussion, you kept playing. Are you a fucking idiot, man? He could... <laughs> he could have, like, long-lasting brain trauma. Yeah, but the... 
the first round of the wild card uh, section of the playoffs is a little bit more important than your, your long-term health of your brain. Like, people everywhere are idiots, and I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot about stuff that I don't even know about, which is why I don't comment online anymore. You know? You're an idiot! You watching this? I love you, but there's... You're, you might be a nuclear physicist working at CERN. There's something out there that you're dumb about. It might be something silly. Maybe you put ketchup on your steak, alright? I'm not for that. But there is something that, that you're an idiot about. And that's part of getting old, man! You're getting... At least becoming an adult is recognizing that, you know... It's, it's that old adage that the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. And you gotta kinda stay out of things that you don't know, and that's... That's that's what I the adage I try to live my life by, but it is I I hate seeing that shit on like the sports websites because I do follow sports and I know a lot of people that are you know in the video game section of things had they disparage sports just a just a bunch of overgrown animals hitting each other yeah but there's stats and there's beauty and elegance and cooperation and it's 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 cool and you know it's nice to have something to to cheer for that unites people because there's not that much of that stuff in the world but anyway you don't have to watch sports it doesn't matter. Um, I think I guess a lot of that is born out of like people that like sports being like Psh, video games. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go watch the Packers game anyway. Um, that doesn't happen that much anymore. I think I think it's a false sense of persecution. Let's see what we get in the chest here before I keep ranting because this is getting ridiculous here. Um, straight up like one of the worst <laughs> selections of items I think I've ever had here. So I'm actually gonna like I'm gonna use half of this shit, and I might take Celtic Cross. But then I'm gonna hope that we just get like a Perthro rune. I don't need. What, what the fuck do I need um, Ramic speed for, right? The comments for everything are terrible, but I hate to see people be like, you know, hey, Patrick Kane, he's got a torn MCL. And then people in the comments, pussy. What a pussy. <laughs> he's faking it. <laughs> he had his mom take the MRI for him so it looked like he had a torn MCL just so we couldn't. What is wrong with you? Are you. Are you okay? It's scary, man. The more time you spend reading comments on anything, and again, I, the, the vast majority of comments on my videos are good, and I hope they stay that way. However, when you read consistently comments online, it becomes this terrifying, like, those people are out there. And so many of them link, like, especially on ESPN.com, which is the largest American uh, sports website, I think. Um, largest American sports network, for sure. Anyway, they link their Facebook to their freaking post, so they'll be like, you know, back in my day, if you had a concussion, you just kept playing, and then you, you know, checked into the psych hospital when you were 50 and never saw your kids again. And you're like, you, you put your identity attached to that. That's crazy. Like, if you, if people are always like, anonymity is what, you know, that's why people are, leave such crazy comments, is because of anonymity. Nobody knows who you are. People are, it's like the opposite. People are willingly associating their identity with, with these ridiculous, like, objectively false opinions in this case. And they're happy to do it. It's amazing to me, man. The internet's a wild place. I love it. You gotta take the you gotta take the the good with the bad, you know? That's because that's the internet. There's there's a lot of amazing shit, and then there's a lot of shit that is amazing because of how ridiculous it is. And you know. I I, I grew up on the internet, probably a little bit less than than the current generation. You know, I got the internet when I was like nine. I don't even know what that's like. Like if you're like fifteen right now, so you were born in like nineteen ninety. Have you just always had the internet? Like, have you lived in a just a, an internet-filled house, like, your entire life? That's so fucking cool and terrifying. <laughs> it's weird, man. I, I don't know if... You know, I'm not doing, like, a kids these days kind of thing, but it's like... I think because technological progress is so, is so fast, or has been so fast, you know, over the past, like, 50 years or something, the differences between the generations, even on, like, a 10-year scale, is nuts. Like, I I know a lot of you watching this are probably, like, 15 right now. I don't know if I can relate to you at all. I, I Sometimes I have people that will be like, Wow, dude, your comments are so true. Like, I'm in high school right now, and I'm like, Man, really? Like, my the bullshit that I talk about is still, like, relevant? I thought people would be like, Shut up, Grandpa, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. I don't know, man. It's weird. I don't think I've talked about, like, a single Isaac-related thing in the last two episodes. <laughs> It's been a good run, but you know, what do you want me to talk about? Oh, you know, it's the one run, hope we get a key beggar, oh, this is gonna be a good one. Uh, I think there's pretty much no chance we lose this one, you know, what can I say, right? Like, we're gonna win. I hope you enjoyed my, my ranting. The, the thing that I, oh, yes. 
You know what? We might do a little bit more exploration then. The, the, the thing that I always want to add to my, uh, my ranting is that for all of the things that I say, recognize that I still think that I am an idiot. Which is not to say that I think I'm stupid, but rather that I think that I know nothing. Or I know that I know nothing, or at least very little. So, this is not me standing on top of a mountaintop preaching and saying, Whoa, you know, this is the way, you know, lo the lion said that the world is like this. No, it's not like that. It's more like these are just my insights from uh, from my time on the earth. And I recognize that I'm as guilty of, of the hypocrisy and insanity and everything like that that I, that I accuse other people of, of being guilty of as well. And it, basically, it's we're all in it together, you know? We've all got these... Uh, these brains that, uh, you know, evolved on the African savanna and now are out here, you know, talking to one another, talking to everybody on the planet at the same time. And we don't know what we're doing with it. Anyway, what a weird episode. I hope you enjoyed it. That was a really fun one. Thanks for watching. I hope if you did enjoy, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.